Good morning. This is the service for April 23rd, 2023, Easter 3. We'll be using service setting 1. We're going to open with our hymn 483, With High Delight Let Us Unite. With high delight let us unite in songs of great jubilation. Ye pure in heart, all bear your part. So sing Jesus Christ our salvation. To set us free forever, he is risen and sends to all its ends. Good news to save every nation. True God, he first from death has burst, forth into life all subduing. His enemy doth vanquish lie, his death has been death's undoing. And yours shall be like victory, for death and grave saith he who gave his life for us, life renewing. Let praises ring, give thanks and bring to Christ our Lord adoration. His honor speed by word and deed to every land, every nation. So shall his love give us above from misery and death set free all joy and full consolation. We turn to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 116. We will read verses 1 through 14. Psalm 116, verses 1 through 14. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he has inclined his ear to me, Therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, 
my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I spoke, I am greatly afflicted. I said in my alarm, all mankind are liars. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. This is glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We return to page 152. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from Acts chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, 
everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 1. If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was man manifest in the last times for your sake. Who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back, saying that they had even seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far off, or far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took the bread, and blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And 
And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had known to them, how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're going to continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 476. Who are you who walk in sorrow? Who are you who walk in sorrow down Emmaus' barren road? Hearts distraught and hope defeated, bent beneath grief's crushing load. Nameless mourners, we will join you, we who also mourn our dead. We have stood by graves unyielding, eaten death's bare bitter bread. Who is this who joins our journey, walking with us stride by stride? Unknown stranger, can you fathom depths of grief for one who died? Then the wonder, when we told you how our dreams to dust have turned, then you opened wide the scriptures till our hearts within us burned. Who are you? Our hearts are opened in the breaking of the bread. Christ the victim, now the victor, living risen from the dead. Great companion on our journey, still surprise us with your grace. Make each day a new Emmaus, on our hearts your image trace. Who are we who travel with you on our way through life to death? Women, men, and young, the aging, wakened by the Spirit's breath. At the font you claim and name us, born of water and the word. At the table still you feed us, host us as our risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, is the Easter hymn we sing. Take our life, our joy, our worship, as the gift of love we bring. You have formed us, all one people, called from every land and race. Make the church your servant body, sent to share your healing grace. Hallelujah! He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! The Old Testament has been challenged from the early part of the Christian church. Marcion, a writer soon after Christ had ascended during the age just following that, claimed that the Old Testament was written by a, an evil God, a God of violence and death and war. And the New Testament was the only one we should listen to, and not even all of it. But we are told quite clearly in the New Testament 
that all scripture is God breathed, that these things were written so that we might believe that we open up the Old Testament as Christ tells these disciples on the road to Emmaus. And there we see the necessity of what happened in the Gospels. We see the necessity of Jesus being born in Bethlehem, the necessity of Jesus fleeing to Egypt, the necessity of Jesus being raised in Nazareth, and most importantly, we see the necessity of Jesus dying on the tree so that he might rise again on the third day. Jesus, walking with these disciples, Clopas and the other one, walking with them to Emmaus, quite a little walk from Jerusalem, is able to open up the Old Testament. And by open up, I don't mean unroll the scroll. I mean able to look at the verses of the Old Testament, the stories of the Old Testament, the signs in the Old Testament, and explain how the type of things that came before pointed to him. Explain how he completed the promises that the prophets made explain how God's plan of salvation was necessitated by the fall into sin, explain the truths that God had founded from the beginning of the world that had worked out through the life of God's people by God until they came to their completion in Jesus Christ. Luther said, if you cut the Old Testament, it bleeds Jesus. Now it is true that it is only necessary for salvation that we have the story of Jesus' death and resurrection and what they mean. Because it is belief in Jesus Christ and our Savior that gives salvation. Now it is belief in what he did, how he died upon the cross and how he rose again. Before Jesus was born, it was belief that he would do these things, that there would come one, Jesus, which means he saves, one who is he who saves, the Christ, the anointed one, and that he would complete God's promises by dying and rising again. And so there is a truth, a reality that for salvation, the Old Testament is not necessary. For salvation, the epistles aren't necessary. For salvation, the Psalms aren't necessary. For salvation, the only thing necessary is that little book of the gospel that sometimes we are given. I have one or two copies around here. That's the necessary thing for salvation. But we live in a world where we contest with sin, our human nature, Satan, and all the other forces that Satan arrays against us. We live in a world where we are guided by the Holy Spirit, by God the Father, by God the Son, we are guided in our lives so that we can live in a way which completes God's plan, which fulfills his promises, which allows us to be his instruments used to spread his love and his word and that little gospel message to others. And so when you are contesting against Satan and when you are doing the works of Christ, there is a necessity that you have guidance from the word of God. And in the 66 books of the Bible, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament, in those books of the Bible, God speaks to us 
He gives his revelation as he revealed it to the prophets, as he revealed it to the disciples, as he revealed it to all those who wrote scripture. And his revelation comes to us so that we can resist what the devil does and so that we have the tools to fulfill those things that God has prepared for us to do. Jesus himself in his temptation goes to the Old Testament and he draws out of it words to resist the devil. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Thou shalt not test the Lord thy God. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone shalt thou serve. Christ goes to the Old Testament so he can resist Satan, and he goes to the Old Testament so that he can fulfill the plans of God. It was necessary that man be raised up, that by a new tree he might dispel the evil done, the sin done, the sin caused when they ate of the old tree. The Old Testament informing the New Testament. And when these disciples on the road to Emmaus are speaking to Jesus Christ and he's opening up the Old Testament, they are filled with a fire inside. At least that's how they describe it themselves. As his words come out, as they look at the Old Testament and the promises of God and what must happen to fulfill God's promises, it takes them from despair back into active joy and life. It takes them from depression to being ready once again to witness to their Savior, Jesus. And it inspires them to go from being tired and drained in that house in Emmaus to rushing back to Jerusalem to inform the disciples, to inform the women that they too have seen their Lord. We look at the Old Testament and sometimes it seems daunting. 39 books, some of which are quite hard to understand. Some of which deal with cultural situations that just don't seem normal to us. I mean, the laws of Leviticus, some of which are poetry. And I know many people struggle against poetry. But we come to the Old Testament and in them we find more about Jesus. And though there is only one thing needful, one thing we need to know to be saved, as we learn more about Jesus, we learn more about being Christians. We learn more about who we have been made to be. In baptism, when Christ put his name upon us, when his Holy Spirit came to dwell in us, he created in us a new person, a new Adam, one who's going to resist the old ways, break away from sin and the chains of slavery that it puts on us, and is now going to live in the way of the shepherd, the way he guides us. And so we come to the Old Testament, and as we get older, as our, our mind grows and its ability to understand, we grow. And it puts in us this fire that is spoken about here in, in Luke. It puts in us this fire that inspires us to be the people God made us to be to resist evil, to seek after good, and then to present the gifts of good to others. Why do we keep the Old Testament? Because it's useful. It's proper for instruction, for education, for, for training in the, the works of God. 
For instance, I go to Proverbs, and in Proverbs I find practical advice for daily living. I go to Ecclesiastes, and in Ecclesiastes I learn how to treat aging and how to treat things of this world having value or not having value. I go to Genesis, and I learn why I act in manners which go against God's word, and why God acts in a way where he rescues me, who doesn't deserve rescue. I go to David and his stories and the kings and in Solomon and Samuel, and I see how God can take a person and use him to further his kingdom, to grow faith to make people's lives better. And I go to the Psalms, and there I find verses which deal with all parts of life, from birth to death, to the struggles in between. And I learn how to praise God in joy and in sorrow. I learn how to approach my Heavenly Father in prayer. The Old Testament inspires me to be a better Christian. It gives me confidence and hope so that I don't lose my faith in my Lord Jesus Christ. And it causes me to delve back into the New Testament, into the life of Christ, into the teachings of his life, to see the wonder of God's plan, to see the mighty things he has done, to see what he has overcome, to see that Jesus loved me enough to die so that I could be an heir to God forever. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, I have been given this gift by Christ. He has fed me with his word. He has fed me with his sacrament. And now I am on flame to bring that word to you, to preach this sermon, to sing these songs, to speak of the resurrection. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We will say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing on 159 the offertory. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word, that you have kept it safe through eras and times, so that it might arrive in our hands. 
Lord, we ask that it continue to be read and used, that, Lord, we can grow in your word and knowledge of your truth. And so, Lord, we can be strengthened in our faith and given the tools we need to live a Christian life. Lord, keep our eyes focused on Christ and use your word to focus our knowledge and our skills to the betterment of his, of his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing him 457 verses 1 and 2. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. Hallelujah! Who did once upon the cross, Hallelujah! Suffer to redeem our loss, Hallelujah! Hymns of praise, then let us sing, Hallelujah! Unto Christ our heavenly King, Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave, Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save, Alleluia. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We close with him 919. Abide, O dearest Jesus. Abide, O dearest Jesus, among us with your grace, that Satan may not harm us, nor we to sin give place. Abide, O dear Redeemer, among us with your word, and thus now and hereafter, true peace and joy afford. Abide with heavenly brightness among us, precious light. Your truth direct and keep us from error's gloomy night. Abide with richest blessings among us, bounteous Lord. Let us in grace and wisdom grow daily through your word. Abide with your protection among us, Lord, our strength. Lest world and Satan fail us and overcome at length. Abide, O faithful Savior, among us with your love. Grant steadfastness and help us to reach our home above. Go in Christ's peace. Amen.